Welcome students, I am Mr. Boscherini and for our unit on forces and pressure our lesson today will be about turning forces. So far we investigated two main effects of forces. We have seen that forces can start an object. So you have an object which is at rest, you apply a force, an unbalanced force, and that object accelerates, so it can be put in motion. On the other hand, you can also use a force to slow down or stop altogether an object from moving. You can, in general, use a force to change the state of motion of that object, including changing the direction in which it's moving. Today we're going to see another effect of forces because, as shown here, you can use a force also to make an object not move around but rotate around a turning point. Here we have a nut and you know in order to uh, tighten a nut or lose it you need a spanner, a wrench and what happens if you apply a downward force the nut will move in a clockwise way if on the other hand my force is upwards the nut will move counterclockwise now it's also common experience that the longer the spanner is or in general the more far away my hand is from the turning point the bigger will be the effect or to get the same effect I will need a smaller force for this reason we introduce a new quantity which is called the torque also known as the moment of a force and a torque is defined by a product between the force that you apply and the perpendicular distance from the pivot. The pivot is what we call the turning point. In the case of a wrench is where the nut is. In the case of a door, for instance, again a door is moved by applying a turning force, a moment, and the turning point are the hinges. So, um, not only you have to uh, take into account the distance between the force and the turning point, but really you have to take into account the perpendicular force. And why is this? Because you know that if this is your spanner to maximize the effect, the force has to be exactly perpendicular to this line that connects the turning point to where you apply the force. Your force is completely useless if it's applied in this direction or even worse in this direction any combination in between will lose some of the effect of your force so this is why we say the torque is given by the product between the force and the perpendicular distance from pivot so torque is a combination of two factors one of them is the force, one of them is the distance from the pivot and it's clear that it will increase if you increase the force but also if you increase the distance from the pivot and this is exemplified by different size of wrenches depending on the size of a knot that you need to tighten or lose you will need a bigger or smaller wrench and actually there's a mathematical relationship uh, that connects the size of a knot to the length of a spanner. A very nice application of turning force is in playgrounds. So this is what we call the seesaw problem. So let's imagine we have a kid whose mass is 30 kilograms and sits two meters away from a turning point, the pivot of our seesaw. So let's calculate the torque, the moment applied by this kid. The force is obviously given by his own weight 
And if you remember that uh, weight is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, more or less 10, 30 times 10 makes 300 newtons. So that is the force applied by this kid on this side of the seesaw. If we want to find the torque, we have to multiply this by the distance from the pivot. And that will give us what we call the counterclockwise. And why counterclockwise? Because if we had this kid alone, the seesaw will move like this, in a counterclockwise direction. And the counterclockwise moment is 300 times 2, that makes 600 newtons per meter. Now we have another kid. He's uh, bigger than the previous kid. Actually, he is twice as big, has twice the mass, 60 kilograms. That means also, since mass and weight are directly proportional, that his weight will be also twice. 60 times 10 makes 600 newtons. Now, what he does, he sits closer to the pivot, actually half of the distance from the pivot, only one meter away. And now when we calculate the torque applied by his weight on the seesaw, we're going to find the clockwise moment. Again, why clockwise? Because if we had this kid alone, the seesaw will move in a clockwise direction. And if we do our math, we'll see this is 600 times 1, that makes 600 newtons per meter. We have a, a more torque going this way here. We have exactly the same torque, but going the opposite direction, and the seesaw is balanced. The seesaw example, uh, it's a very common way to, to uh, show what we call the principle of moments, also known as the law of levers. And that is um, summarized in this way. At equilibrium, so when everything is stable, the clockwise moment or torque must balance the counterclockwise moment. Or talk. And again, we've, if we simplify, we simplify the same problem this way, here we have a force A, this is the distance from the pivot, this is the other force and its distance from the pivot. In order to have equilibrium, we need that this times this, so the torque, the counter counterclockwise torque, must equal this times this which is the clockwise moment or torque. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define, to find, that means the moment or torque of a force. With this lesson ends the series of videos by Mr. Boscarini. Goodbye, students.